All right. That was Marvin Gaye with Inner City Blues. Make me want to holler. <laughs> and I tell you what, dear listener, the progress being made on housing the homeless in Whatcom County is a really slow process, and sometimes it does make you want to holler. But we've got good news coming up on the horizon. And uh, first half of the show here, we're joined with joined by my uh, good friend Douglas Gustafson of Homes Now, Not Later. We're going to talk about uh, Swift Haven, the new camp that's uh, opening up up by uh, Joe Martin Field, actually at the Jerry Baseball Field parking lot below Joe Martin Field. Hey, Douglas, welcome to the show. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, busy, but good. Yeah, I bet you're busy right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Homes Now Not Later's uh, second tiny home village that's being built here. Um, you already have one very successful one going on down in Fairhaven. Can you tell us a little bit about Homes Now? Yep, um, Homes Now started uh, in 2017 um, with the goal of ending homelessness one person at a time. Uh, we set up uh, our first tent encampment uh, behind City Hall, uh, Winter Haven. Uh, we we got we kind of got the door opened uh, to have that encampment based on that we camped out on City Hall for a couple weeks uh, for 18 days, I believe. And uh, and then after that, the city sat down with us and and we talked about a site that they might be able to give us. And at first, it was City Hall site. After we were there for, th for three months, we moved to uh, Safe Haven, which was our second tent encampment. Okay. And then after a few months, uh, and then after a few months, uh, we set up Unity Village. Uh, everyone from Safe Haven moved to Unity Village, and th uh, that village was done in August of uh, 2019. So we've been we've been there for about a year and a half ish right now, uh -huh. and uh, it, it's uh, it's been it's been great. Uh, village runs smoothly. Uh, we have a 40% rehousing rate. Uh, it used to be 30%, but it's going up. Nice. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, things are looking good. And so um, now we're setting up Swift Haven, our, our uh, second tiny home community. Right now it's tents, but uh, I have assurances from the county executive that the, the, the first 15 tiny home structures uh, from 360 Modular will be arriving um, before January 1st. Excellent, excellent. Can you uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the tiny homes that are being made by Three Hundred and Sixty Modular? What are they made out of, and how big are they? Things like that. Um, they, I, I believe they are ten by ten. They're either eight by ten or ten by ten on the inside, and mm -hmm. uh, they they have they look like tiny homes. They have full insulation and everything in them. Um, they 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 can't be folded up as easily as the as uh, the pallet shelters, but they do have insulation, which the pallet shelters do not have. Um, mm -hmm. And they, uh, they they have a steel frame though, so it can be lifted with a forklift. So at the bottom of the tiny homes, you'll see the two slats that you could put a forklift in and. Um, lift them. So the the way that this happened for, so quickly with Swift Haven was a. a, a a, a diverse set of factors or a complex set of factors it wasn't just wasn't just homes now it wasn't just the city it wasn't just the county mm -hmm. wasn't and wasn't even just that so first off homes now has had a successful model with unity village and so we can be trusted to manage a site that's factor number one factor number two uh covid19 emergency uh it gives the state uh, or it gives the city and the county emergency powers that they would not normally have in regards to sheltering and um, and uh, land use and all kinds of things. So, uh, and then the other factor on top of that was Camp 210, because since Camp 210 is, is has been there for a couple months now, mm -hmm. or a month or two, uh, it, it also uh, put the pressure on so that, that, that people saw, hey, you guys need to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And so Homes Now is one part of that. And so what happened was that the county uh, is buying the structures from 360 Modular with, with uh, emergency COVID dollars. Okay. Uh, the city is providing the site, the, the, the actual parking lot that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the city is paying the monthly utility bills. So the city is paying uh, um, the porter potties and the uh, electric and um, Homes Now is taking care of all the rest, and we're managing the site. And so um, so basically, it's a three-way partnership, and that's why it happened so fast. H Homes Now, by the way, still, we have not taken any government money at all. We don't take right. tax dollars, but we have asked the city.
city and the county to spend their money uh, on this goal, and uh, they did so. So that's good. But it was a complex set of factors that that allowed this to happen, I guess is how I'd put it. Sure. Well, and it sounds to me like the city's getting a heck of a bargain having an experienced group such as Homes Now, Not Later come in and set up and manage the, the site uh, for what they're going to be paying for utilities and that parking lot, which is not being used that much, I assume. Uh, with, yeah, yeah, um, uh, that's a that's a heck of a deal. I mean, shoot, Unity Village runs for what about fifteen hundred dollars a month? It, yep, and that's because we pay all our own bills at Unity Village. Unity Village, we built the our, the structures ourselves, and we pay all the utilities ourselves. So that ends up being fifteen hundred a month. This site, though, this new Swift Haven site, because we don't have to worry about that part, mm-hmm. it costs zero per month, other than like basic supplies to keep everything running smoothly, or or things that people need, individual residents need and stuff like that so we can focus just straight on the goal um and i think and i think yeah i think it's a no-brainer um and i think that but and i think that um the, oh yeah the city also has given us reassurances because this site is only till april april 1st okay the i was city, gonna ask the that the city has given us reassurances though that they want to move us to another site with a target of five years so so after this it'll be a, a long-term site um and the goal is five years Excellent. Are they uh, also looking at making that site larger so it can accommodate more tiny homes? Uh, right now, it can accommodate twenty-five tiny homes, and uh, and that that is what we want to stick with because um, we have found that it's easier to manage when you have about twenty or twenty-five. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you if you had a village of fifty, it would be a lot harder to manage because then you'd need like dual kitchen facilities, and you'd be dealing with more personalities and stuff like that. Oh, but sure. So, Oh, that sounds great. Super. Yeah, that uh, I could see that being a win win for everybody. And, uh, you know, I I might want to add to uh, for our listeners benefit the what we've found down at uh, Unity Village is the people form a community and they support each other and they actually pool resources to make sure people don't go hungry and all that. I mean, these folks, they might be homeless, but they're, they they are they a lot of them have some form of assistance or some form of income. Is that correct? Uh, yes, yes, and I'd like to speak to that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so so uh, homes now, by the way, has no paid staff at all. So we're all volunteer run, but the volunteers aren't the ones that are running the show for the most part. Uh, the, the residents themselves run their own village, and so they have their own management structure. Um, they, they they are the staff as well as the residents, and that's what works really well when you don't have paid staff, mm-hmm. um, because, because they they care more about their home being nice than than someone else that doesn't live there, right? And oh so, yeah, yeah. And and also yeah, mo- most most people, even if you're homeless, you have a source, a, some source of income. Either you're on a disability or uh, you have food stamps or things like that. And so we we try to help, but at the same time, like. Mo- these are adults. They take care of themselves, just like you or me. Uh, and we, we support where we can to make sure that uh, they're not in survival mode. And that's and, and the rest kind of takes care of itself. Honestly, uh, we, we do have rules. There's a code of conduct. Uh, the residents, though, can actually uh, form the rules and change them if they if they want to. Um, and so we as much as possible, we're going for a self-managed structure. And, and then it evolves and grows on its own after that. And now we have a really good team, like a cohesive team of, mm-hmm. you know, residents working together with volunteers and staff to, to create the best results, I, as I see it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, you know, again, you're giving them ownership. You're giving them uh, a, an opportunity it, to form a community. Yeah. This is all such basic human needs um, that you guys are meeting in such a... <laughs> Uh, an effective w- uh, way uh, on so many levels. I mean, it's effective because it works. It's effective because it is the best bang for our dollars. Um, bang, bang for buck is the term I like to use. A yeah. Lot. Yeah, boy, I tell you what. So again, you know, 22 people, 20 people at Unity Village. And even yep. with the, I, I understand the porta potties are your most, uh, your largest expense at about 600 bucks a month. 
uh, still f- to house that many people for that little money. I mean, holy cow, folks, look at Bellingham. Think about what a one-bedroom apartment goes for. Um, you're putting 22 or 20 people into homes and giving them a community, and holy cow, a 40% graduation rate. That's, that's outstanding. Yeah. And, oh, that, and, that inclu- and it's actually, if we count just the last year, it's actually significantly higher than that. But our 40 percent counts all the way from the beginning of when we first started. Um, and, and so about 50 people have come through our program and left. And and and, and, that, and that, that was a 40 percent rate. Uh, it's gone up from 30 percent to 40 percent in the last year. Wow. So. Outstanding. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty on uh, Swift Haven. I saw some photos that you were putting up the um, kitchen tent and things. What what sort of what sort of uh, activities going on up there right now? Well, what's going on there right now is we're basic. We, people have moved in. Uh, not all twenty five. We started with like ten, and then um, we're 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 going to let people in gradually over the next few weeks here. Because uh, in the beginning when we did Winter Haven, we did 10, and then that was fine. And then we added another 10 on top overnight. And then it ended up being like where we had to the personalities clashed and stuff. And so it took us some, some weeks to, to work that out. But we figure with our first 10, if we let in like two next week and then three the week after that or something like that, then it'll it'll be fine. Um, and, 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 and that makes sense with the structures coming by, you know, January 10th or something for all 25. So we'll be able to get the 15 we have now into the tiny homes and then within a week or two, we'll be able to add more. But yes, what's going on there is we're building it while we're living there. That's how I would put it. And when it comes to the staff thing, the city does require staff to be on site 24 seven, mm-hmm. but, but, and that's what it is at unity village, but we, we have convinced them to, um, to allow residents to be staff. So, or, so, uh, but they have to have been there for a while. So like, for example, Dave, uh, Morris and Tina Harkness from Unity Village, longtime residents of Unity Village, uh-huh. are the on-site managers of Swift Haven. And um, I live a block away, so I'm very involved as well. But they mm-hmm. are the they are running the show at Swift Haven. Um, and what I've been doing is is I've been the the delivery boy. So I've been going around and getting supplies, uh, the, uh, infrastructure, uh, you know, the hardware store type stuff to get the site up and running. Um, Dave's been working on the kitchen, getting the sink going, and, and all that type of stuff. So that's what's been going on there right now. I I think it's fantastic that you're training people in the one tiny home village to, or you know, they're they're learning skills there to where they're able to come over and supervise and manage opening up more. It sounds like this thing is going to be so self sustaining and empowering for these people. Oh man, you know, <laughs> it's been a mess, messed up year, I think everybody will admit, but uh, you're putting a big smile on my face here. I'm liking this. Um, yeah, we're, yeah. Just trying to get, we're just trying to make a difference and get stuff done. I mean, I'm so, I'm so sick of stagnation where like it's the same record on repeat and it's like, man, we need to try something new. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think... <laughs> I think the the one two punch of what you guys have been doing with homes now, and now this second uh, protest camp out in front of the city hall, uh, that's really uh, holding their feet to the fire and making some good stuff happen. And uh, you know, again, there's all these. I mean, folks, every time you're in your home and you hear that wind and you hear that rain, just remember there's folks out in front of city hall right now intense in that sort of weather i mean we've got to get these people into shelters and uh tiny homes are the perfect thing to do um i'd, so- like, to add, I'd mm-hmm. like to add on that point that um the the majority of people that are living at swift haven now we're from camp 210 so we we actually are directly getting people off the lawn and into housing um and and uh, that's mm-hmm. we have we have one or two that that were on our list otherwise but mm-hmm. but 80 percent are from camp 210 outstanding so. and uh, uh just so the listener uh gets an idea of what they have to go through what what sort of vetting process is there uh to to get into one of okay. the homes now villages 
Yeah, so so typically uh, we have a paper application form for people that don't have cell phones or, or internet, but we also have an online uh, electronic application that's preferred, but at the same time we've got both. Um, uh, we, we do um, a background check. Now, mm-hmm. if somebody has a criminal record, lots of people have criminal records, that's not mm-hmm. a disqualifier. We just look for anything that might be dangerous or something, like if we see like assault with a deadly weapon from last year or something, I'd be like, uh, I don't know, that's a little risky. But mm-hmm. if you see stuff from 2009 and or the 90s, or you see like where it's crimes like shoplifting or, or urinating in public or things like that, it's like, okay, yeah, they're safe. Uh, they mm-hmm. can probably be let in. Um, and and then we also have to send the their imp- to the Bellingham Police Department and they check for warrants. That's what they do. They just check for warrants and if they have no active warrants, um, they they let them in now or that they approve that they can be let in. Now, um, we also, uh, it, it also has loosened a little bit. So for example, uh, Chief Dahl, uh, we, uh, we now deal with Officer Crass instead of Chief Dahl mm-hmm. and Crass has, has indicated that, it, that now we might be able to accept people if the warrant is, is like not a serious warrant. And so that seems to be loosening a little bit too, that part. Outstanding. You know, uh, because really what this is about is, is uh, a second chance or, or a new chance for these yes. people. And it sounds like if you give folks a chance like this, you get a really good response out of them. Yeah, people generally step up and and want to uh, want to contribute on their own. You know, nobody likes no, nobody likes uh, just a handout, right? Like mm-hmm. they, 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 people want to be independent and they want to take care of themselves. And you know, we just try to help people do that. And and then once they do, you know, people still have their issues. Everyone has issues. Mm-hmm. And, but but when you're out of survival mode, all of those issues are mitigated and are not as bad and tolerable. After sure. That. Yeah, yeah. Again, like uh, someone told me from Homes Now years ago, housed people have doors that lock. And that whole idea, that just hit me like a brick, having always had a door that locked all my life. I never really thought about how significant just having your own space, your own little sanctuary where you can, your things are safe and you can <laughs> start to heal yourself. I mean, it's it's an amazing thing. Um, so, yeah, Wow. Good on you guys. Um, so, so the first the first um, units are arriving next week. Uh, that, that's what that's what County Executive Sat Paul told me. Uh, he he uh, him and I were in direct communication. He said he'll know more tomorrow. Okay, but, but he said that he has been in constant communication with the vendor, and that they have assured that by January first. 15 of them are going to be delivered. Now I'm skeptical. Uh-huh. I actually thought, I actually think it's going to take a little longer, but, but that's just how I operate. I expect the worst, hope for the best. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and it's usually somewhere in the middle. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I, but I, he did say 15 guaranteed by the first. So we'll see. Wow. Wow. That's uh that's Friday of next yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah. If you're listening to a rebroadcast of this program on Thursday, dear listener, that's tomorrow. So <laughs> I, I, I think uh, I'll be calling the executive next Thursday and seeing how things are going there. I think it'd be a good idea for just about anybody. You know, uh, community support is very important for these endeavors, folks. And participating in the city council meetings, the county council meetings, uh, the homeless strategy workshop meetings, you can jump into any of those things and your voice can be heard. And it, it- it helps because it puts the pressure on like you know when people when people uh, uh when you get like a lot of people uh pushing for a certain type of change then it it tends to happen even if you get resistance at first there's a way to make it happen uh what i found from years of working with the local governments is that if they want things to happen fast they can happen fast if they want things to not happen they can make things not happen and uh, so, so uh, sometimes I sometimes it surprises me how fast things can happen, uh, mm-hmm. and sometimes it surprises me how slow things happen. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as things happen, I mean, you know, we right. I, th- I think we all understand how how slow government can go, and uh, there's a a million different factors that go into any elected official's thought process as to yeah. how they're going to get from point A to point B on an issue like this. And again, yeah, a lot of it has to be just keep the pressure on. 
uh, in yeah. a nice way, of course. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and also too, uh, trying to trying to build bridges and stuff too is important. So, you know, I, I've had a good I've had good communication with the mayor as well about mm-hmm. about um, what we can do as homes now because you know sometimes when you're going when you when you try to speak to a, an official, sometimes you're going through layers of bureaucracy. But if you can if you can actually get a direct message to him, a lot of times it has a much stronger effect. And so I'm fortunate that I've been able to do that. And then the mayor has listened. He's a receptive mayor. So at least he's he's taken some action on this. So at least there's that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just hope that further actions will be taken because there's a there's a lot more people out there. And so this is just one step of many. Yeah, I suppose it's going to be a challenge to transition this from we're in the middle of a pandemic and a winter emergency into springtime, and uh, hopefully things will be going much better with the pandemic. The weather's getting warmer. Uh, that'll be you know perfect time to do another push and get them to <laughs> break some more ground um, for more villages and not let them slack off on it going well we made it through that and have them back burner this thing again um, right and and, they, and you know when the pressure's not on they might you know the back burner tends to happen this wouldn't have happened for us at all if, unless there was a camp on city hall there's that put the pressure on them to like we got to house these people and so we provided an option uh one option of many uh and there needs to be more options like, mm-hmm. so not everyone will go to the drop-in center uh, or sorry, the base camp. Uh, mm-hmm. Not everybody would do well with homes now either, because it, it, we do very well. But what I'm saying is, like, there needs to be a, a lot of models, and mm-hmm. and depending on who you are, you'll you'll do well in one or the other. And that's how I see it. Like, you know, throw everything at the wall, and something will stick. So, oh yeah, yeah. And we are dealing with human beings here, and yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's gone to a family gathering during the holidays knows. Uh, the challenges and uh, the diverse interests of uh, human beings. So, yeah, yeah, there is no cookie cutter, one size fits all solution. I was really impressed when Marcus D mentioned to me that uh, Mayor Fleetwood had said that he definitely feels tents are not a solution. Tent cities are not uh, a good solution. And that nope. really, you know, <laughs> I mean, having. Having all those folks camping right in front of where all the folks that can make a difference in this go to work day in, day out, um, I think is very effective activism and uh, really humanizes the situation for them and underscores just how serious this this situation is. Yeah, because when people are in the woods, you don't see them. You, you see them when they're at City Hall, but these guys were in the woods beforehand and they were all scattered and just because now they're in one place, suddenly uh they're noticed mm-hmm. uh but uh yeah 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 and i tell you what i'd, I'd uh, just like to do a little shout out to all those folks that like to make uh pretty pretty nasty comments on say kgmi's posts on facebook where they talk about uh, uh the homeless and their hearts sound pretty hard but i tell you what folks this is cost effective and this gets the folks off your trails and uh, gets the peeing out of the alleys and all these different things that go on. Uh, this solves those situations. So even if you don't have the compassion for the homeless that you should have, uh, think of your own self-interest. This is cost effective. This gets that out of your sight. We all know a lot of you folks out there, that's what you want. You want this to go away. The way you make it go away is you support groups like Homes Now. You support folks like the people that are organizing the camp down at 210 Lottie Street. And you keep the pressure on. And uh, yeah. it's a win-win for everybody, even those haters yeah, and, out there. And, I wanted to, and I'm sorry, I, I go wanted ahead. to speak a little bit to that. So uh-huh. uh, I, will, I will tell you that everywhere where Homes Now has been hosted, before we're there, uh, we do get resistance from the neighborhood. We do mm-hmm. get the nasty comments and stuff like that. But but not as much as you think, but we, we get them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then once we're in there and people see what it is, they're like, oh, this is different than what I thought. And all the people that were really negative, so a lot of them become supporters. So it's just that what they have in their – well, the vision they have in their head is different than what we actually do. And once they see what we actually do in front of their face, they're like, oh, okay, I'm okay with this. No, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and you're right. I personally have a friend who wrote a letter objecting to uh, the Telegraph area. Um, um, what was that? Uh, safe Haven? Yeah. A- and a friend of mine wrote a letter 
to the city saying that they were not for that at all. And they turned around and saw what you guys did and ended up writing a second letter. And uh, they even feel guilty to this day. And it's a, it's a natural thing. There's been so much fear of the homeless propagated by media. You look at some of those hit pieces like Seattle is dying. and oh, that, was bad. That, uh, that was a bad one. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. The guy just came out with another one. I think it's called Seattle is still dying or something yeah. like that. But, you know, talk about... It, it, throwing all the fear and all the negativity out there and offering zero solutions. Uh, right. That's not but, the way to like deal with this. Did, what they did was they, the, 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 the big problem I had with that film was that they, they covered the 10 most criminal homeless people, like the, the, the top 10 on the list that are homeless and criminal. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, and then they paint a broad brush and say, this is homelessness. And it's like, no, actually it's a, it's a lot more than what you described, but okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, those, those ones are bad. Yeah, yeah. I started watching both of them, and I can't get very far into them. It's it's disgusting. It, it is so... I watched the whole thing, but I also find it disgusting, too. Yeah, yeah. It just, you know, and again, to, to film mentally ill folks out on the streets that are in so dire need of compassion and help... And and these guys are using them to what sell advertising or to scare people. Well, well, well what uh, they did at the end. No, this is the funny part. What they did at the end was they 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 proposed like opening up like a like an old prison and like sending them there at, 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 like to house them. And then and then at the end they had somebody that was that was saying that they're glad that they got locked up because it, getting locked up saved their life. And so you got one person at the end that's saying that, that they should get locked up because it'll save their life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's, and that one person speaks for everyone. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Use it as like a prop. But yeah. Like, mm -hmm. It's always like that media. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you. So those things aren't true. If you want to see the real reality behind what is effective and how we can deal with this situation, which is, nationwide by the way dear listener uh check out homes now not later in fact uh douglas what can people do to help and how can they get a hold of you well uh i can tell you that at, at this time it might change in the future but at this time uh if you go to homesnow.org uh you'll see our phone number on there um and that is my personal cell number so if you want to get direct in touch to leadership of homes now send you can you can feel free to call me directly uh or or email or check out our facebook page our facebook page is where we're most active um uh because people can comment and and there's ideas back and forth um you, mostly just if people visit us they they get to know us uh they they can spread the word they, they can uh tell their friends and family uh you know we're a community and as long as people feel like they're part of the community then um it, 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 you know, that's what will help because uh, then people can see where they might be able to contribute. Um, we, we, uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have a very open door policy. We don't have layers of bureaucracy that you have to cut through. Uh, if you want to talk with us, you can talk with us. Excellent. Excellent. I love that transparency. That's always been something very good about this organization. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time, Douglas. And thank you for all of your good work. Um, I, you've been, you've been, banging at this thing for years now and uh it's really great to see where things have gone it's positive progress slow but still you're making a difference and i really appreciate uh everything you and homes now does thank you very much and it's only going up from here all right excellent all right well we're going to take a break here on block off uh we'll be right back after a couple of songs all right well here we are block off end of the year a little bit of positive news on the homeless front here in bellingham and joining us now we've got my good friend radio partner and uh currently banned from the studio because he's out and around a little too much uh doing the good work we got marcus d here in the house hey marcus how you doing uh, great to be here again, Stacy. Uh, good to, hello, Bellingham. It was a great interview with Doug. I'm glad that went well like that. That was just really, really, uh, that, that was a good informational uh, interview. Nice shot. Really uh, proud of Holmes now. I tell you what, you two guys um, are really making a difference in this town. So I appreciate both of you. So 
yeah, you've uh, you've I been. Know, it's, 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 it's it's hard to find a way to describe my role in it other than it, that doesn't sound somehow egotistical. I, I serve <laughs> because I'm allowed to, and that's where I'm at. So that, I'm, it's 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 my pleasure, Bellingham. Uh, uh, I, all I ask is you follow my lead a little bit. We've got some stuff going on, and I, I swear to God, we've got the cure to homelessness. It's not it's not just stopgap stuff. So <laughs> it really it looks is. like we've got some movement on some tiny homes. Maybe not the ones we were looking at out of uh, Everett, but uh, um, there's some. No, yeah, I can I can I, I can scoop you that one. I can tell you that we've got movement on the tiny homes out of Everett too. I know that uh, mayor's mayor. Fleetwood uh, committed to the purchase of 25 of those uh, late last week in a meeting. I think that was, I think that was a, a Wednesday meeting, and uh, we expect another meeting tomorrow. I've, it's been uh, my pleasure and and uh, my burden, and I see as my duty as I can as homeless advocate, uh, county appointed position for the homeless strategies work group that that I get in there and advocate for uh, for the people the best that I can. And I find myself really, really quite in alignment in most regards to the, co- the collective, as they call themselves, the people who formed the, the group on the camp who want to try to provide shelters um, mm-hmm. and, and petition the government to help with that. And it's, just, it's, it's, it's really wonderful to see uh, this idealism blossom on the ground and, the, and, and with community coming together uh, like – naturally because that's what community wants to do even with its problems it's, mm-hmm. um, it's, yeah. it's really healing for everybody there in so many ways i tell you if you give people a chance to do good things oftentimes you'll find people do good things uh yeah, i mean it, it doesn't I, I don't mean to to say that there's not you know there, there's mental health issues on our streets it's, these are all the people that can walk right up and ask for help from anywhere in Bellingham, and so we're seeing it all, and I and I and I beg for Bellingham to see it through that lens too. This is triage. These people are just trying to do their very best with a very desperate situation still, but they've provided so much structure and so much um, a community for these people who were failing in our streets just before the storms came, and and they're, they're still largely failing on the lawn. They desperately need your help. They desperately need help, outreach from the government and mm-hmm. health department, and that's not forthcoming. So. We're just, we're just we need you know we could really use the the, the, the Red Cross in honesty mm-hmm. uh, and, and and even that has been called for and that's that's falling on deaf ears apparently so we'll see. Wow, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean again, look at the storms we've been having, look at the amount of rain we've been having, uh, and we've still got over a hundred people out there on the lawn in front of City Hall. Um, you mentioned when I was chatting to you earlier that you had a conversation with County Executive Sidhu. Uh, on Christmas, right? Yeah, he actually called me on Christmas Day, and he he, mm-hmm. he uh, explained to me that that he would uh, that he had family inside, and that he had come out to sit in his car uh, and told them all that he had a very important phone call to make. He wanted to let me know that he felt that way about it, and so I want to acknowledge that here too. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, uh, he was keen that I hear him out and then uh, take my notes and then come back at him with what I feel and he'll, he'll hear me out and like that. Wow, I heard him out. <laughs> 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 but you know what? I, he came across too. Um, but there's there's a lot more work to be done. Um, he's he's um, he, I've, I've heard him say a lot. Of, I've heard him espouse a lot loftier uh, of talk in the past as a, as a counselor when trying to protect this very same group of people. I mean, many of the faces that we see on the lawn right now are people that we dealt with three winters ago and, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, 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 and had to provide uh, that, that, that the sad Paul said who was uh, petitioning the county executive at the time, Jack Laus, to uh, open up shelters immediately for the, to service these people because of the, they were going to die out there. And, um, and he was just, he was, that's what sold me on Sat Paul, actually, mm-hmm. that he cared that much and that he fought his way through. Uh, yeah, people told him there was reason there was reason not to, to sign those orders today because we didn't exactly have the executive in the room, but we did have the deputy executive in the room. Mm-hmm. Sat Paul pounded on the podium and said, "I want we do have an, that's enough executive here. We have the will of the council. We have the will of the people. We do, you know, and he he really made a good case. And and you know what? They did open up that shelter, and then they had to volunteer to to, to along with other volunteers. They manned that shelter uh, mm-hmm. because they couldn't 
in, 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 they couldn't quickly uh, hire people and free up those funds to, to, to do that. So they actually all took pulled shifts. And Sat Paul was one of the people who pulled those shifts. He mm-hmm. saw those faces then. Heck. And these are the same faces on the ground. And I, I, that's what I keep trying to remind him of as mm-hmm. we go. Um, well, yeah, so, that, <laughs> that quote from Sat Paul from years ago when he said, you don't ask how much a bucket costs when your house is on fire. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That was, that, that's him. Yeah, that was that same that same uh, meeting. That yeah, same I posted, meeting. I posted yeah, it all over Facebook. You could probably see that on Homes Now pages or something. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, it's an interesting uh, early 2019 council meeting where everything uh, changed in Bellingham. Yeah, so, and and activists were were behaving like good activists, and politicians were stepping up to the plate. It was it was. I, I'm surprised that I'm praising that moment so hard now <laughs> because <laughs> of the failure that we're seeing in large. You know, mm-hmm. and 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 I want to. You know, I, I, again, I want to also say that I I don't speak for the collective, the group that's on the ground, the the, the Bellingham Mutual Aid people who've come together to 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 serve. I don't represent them, but again, I, I find myself in alignment with them and mm-hmm. consult with them on the constant. As as well as with our government leaders. Now, can um, you can you let our, our listener know just just who are these people? The the this <laughs> Bellingham Collective. Well, um, the Bellingham Collective represents and is a collective of the, the campers. There are people who have uh, there's there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of useful uh, activists who step forward to represent and try to decentralize to the level where they're just you know basically a camper in their representation. At least that's the spirit of negotiations. Yes, the government needs somebody to negotiate with. Yes, somebody's going to have to sign on the dotted line to say we're here to help provide those services, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, so this group, uh, is is largely has, has come out of the uh, the funding movement of, of of Bellingham because they see that services is what they want Mm -hmm. and, and less police chasing these people around and abusing them all summer long, like happened is, less of what they want so it's, it, it, it all just aligns that these people want and so many of these people who came in from that political standpoint all of a sudden discovered that they had fallen in love with the community and are now social workers and it's just it's just beautiful to see uh, people light up on that level and say I'm going to help on this lab. this is where it's at this is it's, I want to be part of this and yes they get to also grind their political acts because you know what if government is still still two months later not stepping up to help this at all. Uh, we have four outhouses and two frozen uh, hand washing stations. That doesn't cut it. And and, <laughs> and 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 so you know they did provide yeah. us an, uh, some electrical too and and a, and a water spigot. But in fact, uh, the people on the ground are largely on their own. There's mm-hmm. no other there's no other community uh, entities that have stepped forward. No uh, nonprofits that have stepped forward other than Homes Now with logistic support and some volunteers on the ground. Um, there, we don't see that from the, the mission. We don't see that from the hot team uh, from from Opportunity Council, which is completely government funded, and, and this is their job. These are their these are their clients. Everybody's those people are taking the day off. <laughs> they took Christmas off and they took the holidays off, and and um, and and Hans is still trying to slowly trickle people back into the mission. Uh, so the status in Bellingham is, and that's a trickle. You have to get an appointment to come in and do the snap, the, the quick test uh, for mm-hmm. for COVID uh, in order to get in. And is that so, to get I mean, into the base you camp? Book that appointment, which mm-hmm. you know, then so then you find yourself at Camp Two Ten asking for use of a, of an iPhone to get to get a book to go over and have the honor of testing with base camp. Wow! So it's really the eye of a needle that you have to pass through to get there. Still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when they overflow, then they would trigger the overflow sheltering. But since they haven't overflowed and it's since this thing started because they kicked everybody out, whatever. Anyway, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> the, truth is, the truth is we have a solution as well. And we're going to be talking with uh, Sat Paul mm-hmm. and, and, and with Mayor Fleetwood uh, tomorrow. And, and I expect that that will be Monday to our listeners in case you're mm-hmm. listening on Thursday. Uh, mm-hmm. This will already have happened, ideally. And mm-hmm. uh, hopefully we'll have something going on. I, I also would like to just let you know all that, that emergency sheltering has long since been the purveyance of – everybody knows that it's the health department's job to make that happen. It's a county entity. The county council is the health board, and and they have not provided emergency sheltering yet. There's been no emergency sheltering identified, and right now it seems that our governments are bargaining of these, these tiny home shelters as – uh, a bone to throw out. It's like we'll give you so much shelter if if you'll take a, a deal that doesn't completely fix the problem. 
and nobody is there is interested in, in not completely fixing the, the problem. I myself, as homeless advocate in Whatcom County, would be remiss if I left one person behind. So I absolutely won't compromise. That's my stand. But I'm not working the deal for the collective. That's mm-hmm. so I just want Whatcom County to know where I stand on this. This is a protest on the lawn. I see that. And I acknowledge that, and I support them, uh, both both with my uh, integrity and on, on the ground, and with my supplies, and 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 uh, as as protecting their rights until something until they have viable shelters available. Mm-hmm. Well, so it, that's, it, that's, that's that's where I stand. It sounds like they are definitely achieving that goal. Uh, like Douglas said in the first half of the show here, uh, homes now wouldn't be setting up uh, Swift Haven if it wasn't for the protest camp at 210 Lottie. This is like a one-two thing going on here. I really like the cooperation between the two groups towards this this common goal. I mean, you've got folks that are putting the uh, issue right in the face of those who can do something about it, and then you've got folks with experience that can drop in and do something about it. Um, again, it's, it's, it's great to see these promises of these shelters and things, but that's not going to, there's not going to be enough come middle of January, end of January, when we really get the bad weather around here. I mean, everybody thinks Christmas is when it's cold. No, man, it's, it's still fairly balmy out there compared to what it's going to be in a few weeks. So we've got to keep this thing going on. Um, when you mention these emergency shelters and that they don't have any plans for it, do they not have any places located or or designated for warming places? I know years ago, or even last year, they had places where people could go to just stay warm overnight. Um, do they have plans for that? There's none. In short, none. I can, wow. I can. I, I could go on. You could go to the homeless strategies work group where I do a lot of my work. We we work in the daylight there. You can come and you come to the county site. Look up the homeless strategies work group on, on the on the county site. Uh, go there and you can watch past Zoom meetings that we've been having since last March uh, throughout this pandemic and and really get caught up to speed there's some good tv there i'm sorry to say that i have to be the one that goes nah, 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 most of the time because mm-hmm. nobody else is apparently burning on the issues that i was <laughs> but here we are and we have not identified uh emergency winter sheltering or just round year-round winter sheltering even um with a capacity of 200 base camp was supposed to overflow and trigger 39 more beds for mm-hmm. men only uh, to be operated by Christ the King Church at the at drop-in the, center location the former on one. Holly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But but since they won't overflow because they kicked everybody out and they're only letting people slowly trickle in over weeks, mm-hmm. uh, that, that that emergency shelter will not be triggered either. And it is also run by the mission. Of course, there's almost everybody that you see on the lawn uh, at, at City Hall is is not allowed at base camp or won't go to base camp and and won't take advantage of mission services so even if you open up an overflow shelter run by mission services then you still have the same problem people won't go there or aren't allowed there because of mission Mm -hmm. rules Mm -hmm. and so this is something that advocates have been yelling about for years and uh and now we this year we really see it come into glaring uh detail of what what the real problem is there there's, there's more sure. people on the lawn at city hall than there are sheltered by the mission and all of its associated shelters there are empty buildings all over bellingham owned by the mission right now so we need to like really examine that yeah yeah no kidding and again the reason some of those folks won't go is they have trauma related to experiences in the church um it, it's a fact uh uh, it, it's a fact and you know there's no way to dance around that there's some folks that yeah, just no, won't go there there's, there's, there, you're right there's some folks that are there's just just will not go because it's a church there are mm-hmm. other folks who go i'll be glad to go to a church but it can't be run by that church and and they have their reasons and they have their experiences and, and specific mm-hmm. shelter recollections of where they've been so yeah. you're right there's a lot of trauma that's being had that hasn't that, that gets downplayed a lot and and for us to hold you know i'm, I'm not going to hold my hands over my ears to and eyes to that when people uh report it to me over and over and over again i mean i start to take with some fluidity that there's definitely something 
rotten there. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know what, that's okay. Uh, we can learn from that and move on and make reform. But if we don't, if we don't acknowledge what's gone wrong and try to change it, then, then that's not okay. So we, once, once it comes to light, we need to deal with it. And so here we are, that what's come to light is people that need emergency shelter now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I want to make sure that I, that when I say that I, that I believe this is a, a the, the cure to homelessness is because I helped to build the Homes Now model that we've seen. I helped to run it. I was I was mm-hmm. part of the leadership of Homes Now for a full year as vice chair, and I camped with those people. I stayed in in a cabin there for four nights a week. Mm-hmm. I, I put a lot of time into Homes Now, and I believe in the model so thoroughly that it, it, it the rehabilitation rate, the re, the rehousing rate, the the crime drop when it's in your neighborhood, when when there's outreach that's needed on the streets, it comes from this. Community. Community. You bring us the donations, and and our people know where to distribute it, who to distribute it to. They're actually talking to the people on their phones and chats and things, and saying, "What do you need? You need this? Okay, I'll bring that." It's it's a beautiful, organic, community-driven solution. All we need is a partnership with government to allow it to happen and to support it as it happens. Mm-hmm. The, the, this is a heavy lift, what we're doing now, the people who aren't allowed at base camp and the people who've been relegated to living in our streets and, 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 and in our woods or, and, and doing damage all over environmentally, too, mm-hmm. and, and to private property that, that the city doesn't cover you for. Uh, these people are going to need some, some services as well. We don't just put people in shelters and not help them. These are going to be hard people to service, some of them. Some mm-hmm. of them are going to fly right to the top. Homes mm-hmm. now is grabbing a lot of people who they can help, and I'm so grateful to that. But there's, a, there's a heavy lift on the ground. Mm-hmm. Those people are going to need social services. The government is committed to, to, to helping to provide money for, for some of these social services. They understand that, and what I've been proposing all summer long, everything, is take the CARES dollars and the federal and state dollars available right now for this emergency buy into several shelters, way more shelters than they're even talking about right now, mm-hmm. buy them and put them on the ground, get these people into shelters immediately, and then use the rest of the funds to try and get some social workers in there. When, you, when you've when done that, now you look for the budget that we've got on homelessness in the next two years. It's already been set. Just raid that budget, and instead of providing motel vouchers and leases on facilities that, that burn right up and you don't own anything later, it's instead invested into these villages and get social servants in there and get some actual services for people. Yeah. We do a full buy-in on that program with the same budget we're already using. We could solve homelessness in our city, and then we can take it to other cities and show them how to solve homelessness in their city instead of waiting for their people to come to our town to, to, to do that, which is what everybody's like worried about, that we're going to invite people here. There may be some. There may be some. But you know what? Somebody's got to lead, and you know what? We've got the solution, so we should definitely do this. Oh we, yeah, we should we should share this information like wildfire across America and solve homelessness in the blink of an eye. If mm-hmm. we just you know if we can get a buy in, everybody's got to buy in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it it looks like again the baby steps are being made, and slow but sure there is some buy in on the part of the city. Uh, it's good to see uh, members of the county council that are supportive of tiny homes and dealing with this problem in a different way. Uh, And again, you're absolutely right. The folks that are camped out at City Hall, these are folks that are going to need a lot of services. This is heavy lifting. It's not going to be easy. But in Bellingham and in Whatcom County, it's doable. And it would be amazing to see this happen here and then have it spread elsewhere you know and i would say to the people that go oh if you do this sort of thing well more people will come here well okay if they do they do but if we do it here and help export it elsewhere then everyone's taken care of and isn't that what we're supposed to be doing is just looking out after each other holy cow so and and i'll tell you this marcus (laughs) once this is successful you'll find every single local politician that might have stood in the way or dragged their feet they'll be out there thumping their chest and going yeah i did that <laughs> i supported that <laughs> no i have no question about it hey no i do want to i do want to put a caution there in some of your statement there and here is uh-huh. it, it is this it's not a full buy-in yet it is just a, a coming across a little bit Mm-hmm. And to, in large regard, it really looks as if they're just trying to clear the city hall lawn when we know that there are 
hundreds more people out in, in our woods and, and surrounding areas around Bellingham and Whatcom County. There are, there's, it's largely regarded that there, there, there is between 12 and 1,500 people in Whatcom County right now experiencing houselessness. And, and we have the mission has 200 beds. And then, and then 39 more if you go to the drop-in center. And then Homes Now is going to bring online another another 50 maybe in the next month or three, uh, depending mm-hmm. on how fast those shelters can get made. We have hundreds of other people that are going to need service. And, and we need to get ahead of it because during this pandemic and during the, uh, the the rent moratorium and all that, we're even still experiencing more and more. I'm watching, I'm still going out on the streets and doing outreach to people who aren't camped at, at Camp 210. Uh, some people aren't comfortable there. Some people don't, aren't comfortable in crowds. And some people, you know, a lot of people are camping in their cars and RVs down on Cornwall to an extent like I've never seen. Oh, so, yeah. So um, we're, we're, it's already happening and the moratorium hasn't been lifted on rent. Uh-huh. We, yeah. We need to get way ahead of this and, mm-hmm. and, and be proactive. We need a site like the Clean Green site off of Lakeway. That size allows us to bring in multiple camps or maybe even some, several of them run by one organization, but each camp can't, like Doug observed, can't, should not be over 25 people or so because that's just too much to tax the, uh, the kitchen and, and bathrooms with in any one camp. Mm-hmm. So you need to just, you need to spread that out into smaller camps, but it, it, they shouldn't be. It, this is this is an emergency. We need to provide grounds where the where the county can come to bear with maximum amount of, of yield out of less money, and so they can provide one large services building with each corner of the services building being in a different camp. You can service a hundred people with one service building and four camps. Okay. Uh, run by different operators. So oh, yeah. There's lots of solutions out, out here. Excellent. Well, you know, and, and that's a good way to end this interview. There are lots of solutions out there. Let's keep working on them. Um, wow, Marcus. <laughs> Can't wait for us to be able to be in the studio together again soon, uh, doing what we do. But man, I'm so proud of you and so pleased with what you and everyone down at that camp and everyone at homes now and all the volunteers, all the folks, even right down to the, the neighbors that are making cookies and bringing them down. Um, it's great to see this community banding together and doing something about this crisis in our community. So it's, that's true. It's a community. So far, it's almost an entirely community solution, and it and it really heartens me. Crime mm-hmm. is down. Holly Street is empty. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Bellingham. I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, folks. You uh, you go around. You look. Uh, you give people a place to go. They'll go there. Give people a place to band together and form a community and help each other. They'll go there. They won't be out there. And again, like we talked earlier, all you naysayers out there, um, uh, you don't want to see homeless people. Uh, This is the way to do it. Let's take care of these people. And then what you're going to see is not homeless people. You're going to see people that are part of your community. You're going to see people that are bettering themselves and and making a better life for themselves, which makes a better life for everyone. So there you go. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Bellingham. Happy New Year. Thank you, Marcus D. Thank you, Douglas Gustafson. Everyone, again, that is involved in this. Thank you so very, very much. Thanks for the air, Stacey. We yeah. really appreciate your support out there. I tell you what, uh, we'll be doing this more. Uh, again, some of the best stuff we've got going on in this community right now. All right. Well, thank you, Marcus. And thank you, dear listener. This has been another episode of Block Off with Stacey Block and Marcus D. You can catch a rebroadcast of this show Thursday at 7 p.m. The Walker Worldwide Weed Report, where we discuss weed this week, Mondays and Wednesdays at 